What's going on growers, it's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. It is July 3rd today and for the last few days it's been raining, which is great because the food forests have just been drinking it in. So today, me and Tuck want to take you along with us for a backyard garden tour. Let's go! Let's start this tour out in the old food forest in this back corner here. You'll notice we've got this pallet raised bed. It's doing real well in this section. I've also got these blueberries in the back. We've put these in recently, but they're really starting to produce. We've got some delicious blueberries that are ripe and ready right here. Nothing like fresh blueberries. So good, so delicious. Decent size on these too. And then right next to us here, there's also blackberries. So some of the blackberries are getting close, as you can see. So we love our berries. Really nice. In this section, you'll notice in the pallet raised bed, um, the tomatoes, they're looking a little uh, leggy, I would say, and uh, there's not a lot of leaves packed on them. And the reason for that is they're not getting a lot of light. There's a decent amount of shade that uh, gets on this bed back here because the cherry tree above me has really started to get large, as well as this apple over here. But we're still trying to get the most out of this section. Still growing tomatoes. I may prune some of the cherry tree above me in the future, but overall the bed looks really nice. We've got zinnias and flowers mixed in, and then we always have carrots mixed in with our tomatoes because of that classic book that we love, the companion book, Carrots Love Tomatoes. So carrots and tomatoes are great companions. We've also got basils and stuff mixed in too. Let me just snack on these uh, berries real quick. Look at that. It's so nice to be able to come out here and grab fresh berries, especially in the mornings and stuff when they're nice and cool. Incredible flavor. Let me take you through some of these tomatoes. You'll see how much larger these ones are, are, how much more full they are. They don't look leggy. They're doing incredibly well. And this is because this is a beautiful spot in the yard where they get a lot of good direct sunlight and they're performing excellently. So I plant tomatoes, as you'll notice, on stakes and also up strings. I'll plant them directly into the natural soil and I'll also make some of my own soil. So I plant them a, a number of different ways. They do real well in my natural soil because I'm in New Jersey and we're known for growing our tomatoes. Right next to me here, the tomatoes, you'll notice we've got an apple tree. This one's performing really well. This is the honey crisp apple. So an excellent apple looking real nice with a good amount of apples on it, which is so exciting to see. Once you see the fruits starting to come onto those trees, swelling up in size, it, it encourages you to get out there to keep more planting. This apple tree is just looking epic. It's looking incredible. There's so many apples on it. It looks like it's like almost becoming a detriment to the tree. And one thing I've had a problem with in the past, and I still do, is I tend to get a little greedy. I probably should thin my trees a little more than I do. But when you see all the fruit on there, it just it's, it's hard to take and pick off good fruit. Let's keep moving, though, and check out these two raised beds that we've put in just a couple years ago. They've performed so well and just pumped out an incredible amount of food for us, and they're not stopping. One thing you'll notice here is we've got some cabbages planted. We've also got cucumbers, tomatoes. So the time of year right now, it's kind of like a shoulder season where we're transitioning from summer, from spring into summer. So we still have some of our spring crops, like the cabbages, beautiful cabbage about ready to go here, and then another beautiful cabbage back here ready. But we've also got our peppers planted, like under here. These peppers are having a little bit of a tough time getting some light fighting the cabbages. But soon the cabbages will come out and the peppers will just take over the space. And you'll notice in the center here, we've got a bunch of carrots planted. This is kind of dividing the two, but we also love planting root crops next to our fruit crops. This way we're you know, utilizing all that space, not only above the ground, but under the ground too. We've got peppers all planted in this section here. Some of the peppers have gotten uh, a little weak just from getting blown over a little bit. So we're just gonna have to stake these up. They're still doing really well and I'm happy overall with how they look. In this section, we've got some leaves, just crushed up leaves as a mulch, helping to retain a lot of that moisture. And the cucumber in the back corner here, got some cucumbers on it, looks excellent. I just stuck this in the corner. I'm gonna let this trellis along the ground and it'll just give us some bonus cucumbers. So it's already doing real well. Let me take you to this other raised bed right here because you'll notice there's a theme that has happened uh, with the transition of the season where we've removed all of our peas and now replaced them with all cucumbers. So every section that there was peas, there's cucumbers now. You can see some zinnias planted here and stuff. And I wanna mention one thing, Bill Mollison talks about it and he talks about like, if you wanna plant something on an edge or you want the birds to plant something for you, the best way to get the birds to plant something is to put a fence up because the birds sit on a fence like this and then you'll notice, you know, they go to the bathroom and then their droppings drop down right here and also right here. So, you know, they're, they're sh 
uh, moving the seeds all around, but they're also fertilizing the ground. So it's kind of like a little hangout spot where the birds are working for us. Because the birds have become a large part of this forest, there's no way to break away from that because you know the animals are a part of the forest. As we look over here, we'll notice string hanging. This was a string I used in a different section, but there's so many birds' nests in the garden now that they're just taking anything they can find and make nests. So in the Prisioni apple, we've got a nest right here. And then in some of my other apple trees, uh, there's a nest in the back where there were some birds that we had some robin's eggs and they hatched and that whole generation came through. So I'll give you a clip of that if I still have it. But overall, the Prigioni apple is looking fantastic. Let me take you over to these grapes underneath here too, because they're doing really well. They're uh, some of my best performing grapes. Here's the Niagara over here. I'm going to still have to take a few of them out because uh, there's just too many. But one of the reasons I love these grapes and I love the Catawba and I love the um, the other North American grapes is because the North American grapes are more resilient to the brown rot, which is a big problem where I live. So the Concord grapes, they're super resistant to it because these grapes can look like they're performing really well and then all of a sudden they'll start to develop brown rot and it'll start to spread through the grapes. But with some varieties like the Concord grape, once it gets to a certain size, it basically becomes resistant to that brown rot. So it's a really good one if you live in a section with high humidity like me. Let's keep moving. We'll check out this fig right here and it's doing really well. When it comes to the figs, let me show you a section right here. You'll notice we've got some large figs down here and then some smaller figs up top. This fig is going to continue to try producing fruit even though it has already some on it. So what I want to do is, after I have some of these lower figs that are large, I want to take off some of these smaller figs at the top because they're probably never going to have time to finish. This way the plant can concentrate all of its growth and all of its hormones on the production of the fruit. So I'm going to take off some of these small ones. We're going to do that on a lot of the smaller figs as we move up here too just to make sure we can ensure ourselves a harvest. Like we'll take these three small ones off and leave those two because we don't want to be too greedy like I usually am. And we'll check out over here the hazelnuts. These, uh, I'm really excited. I, I don't know what else to say about it. They're just doing so well. This is the one that it's like has huge nuts on it and a massive uh, fruit set this year or nut set. There's so many on it. The tree looks incredibly heavy. The trees are just expanding and getting wider and wider, but it's coming to the point where I don't care how big these things get, because if these can produce buckets of hazelnuts, we're talking food all winter long, I can't think of a better thing than a high productive hazelnut. So delicious, we can make uh, nut butters out of them, anything we want, so nice. And you'll see all these echinaceas in here, that's why I love having them in here. I mean, it just, it adds an element of the garden, a level of color, a level, uh, they just draw me in, I can't stop looking at them. It brings the birds in, it brings the bees in, and it brings me into the garden. Just to walk around here sometimes and just to overall be thankful for everything out here. So beautiful. And then in the back here, we've got this pear tree doing incredibly well, loaded with pears. Another thing that I have to come by and do some more thinning because there's just probably too much fruit on it. We wanna make sure that this small tree can support all the fruit that it's trying to produce. You'll notice the difference in the varieties though. This variety right here is doing incredibly well really healthy and then this variety in the back you'll notice it's got more of a some kind of fungal damage on the back you'll see it's just the, it's just this one variety so this one's obviously more susceptible to the fungal damages we're going to keep an eye on that and we're just going to monitor it and then maybe use some sprays if we need to in the future underneath here i'm just going to poke under here you can take a look at me uh the the persimmon's doing really well and you'll notice like with that back corner and this front corner i'm obviously kind of crazy and I've got this strange addiction to constantly putting more and more plants in, packing more food in as much as I can. Whenever I see a little bit of light shine through, I got to stuff something in. So sometimes it's not the greatest thing, but when things come together and they do work and grow together, it ends up being a really fun system to be a part of. So as I stand here, you know, we've got flowers, fruit, more fruit, nuts, asparagus, all in a very small tight together section. So that's why I call it a food forest because it has that actual forest feel. You can come out here and almost feel like you're getting lost sometimes. As I walk along the young food forest right here, I wanna show you all the grapes on the fence line. So I'm gonna slowly track, look at this thing, just absolutely loaded. And you'll notice there's very few leaves here. I went crazy just pruning out any of the leaves that are covering the fruit because I do not want this brown rot spreading. So anywhere I see brown rot, I just remove that. And a spot that I see a lot of leaves covering a fruit, I remove those leaves. There's, you can see how the varieties are changing as we're moving down the line. 
there's a little smaller grape a little further behind than the one we just showed you. I can see some brown rot in some spots, so I'll come through and just continually cut those off because we love the rain so much. We needed the rain, but this is also what's spreading our brown rot. Here's a section here, look, almost no leaves. We really want it open. And as we move along this whole fence line, we're talking grapes galore. And as incredible as this looks, we're not gonna get all these grapes. We're gonna lose some to brown rot, but we're still gonna get a really nice harvest. So it's a great feeling that we're gonna have that harvest. This bed right back here is doing relatively well too. Here's the one that I just put in, the keyhole bed. We've got our Castata Romanesco, our favorite kind of zucchini, doing excellent. We've got lettuce hiding underneath that. We've got our beans doing well. We've got some flowers right here, excelling. And then back here, we've got a broccoli that's heading up doing relatively nice. We've got cucumbers growing back along the fence and we've got some beets that are ready to harvest under here. Some nice fat beets. We're not gonna get them just yet, but look at that set of beets right there. You love to see it. The three beet, the trio of beets looking excellent. And then this birdies raised bed has gone from max production to just looking like, just like another bed. But it's gonna be producing soon. We've got our tomatoes in. They're gonna start really excelling and growing so well. Right next to me here, we've got some more tomatoes that I planted. These tomatoes look small and they look a bit like sad for the timing because I just put them in. Last year, I didn't put any tomatoes in this section, but I just had extra tomatoes, so I said, I gotta get them in. So I put them in right here. Let me show you the tomatoes that are doing probably the best on the property as I bring you to a section right here. Here's the tomatoes on the trellis that I built just last year with one piece of wood. We built this trellis, it's doing fantastic. The tomatoes are doing very well. You can see how healthy and how vigorous they're growing. And this is a great spot in the yard, uh, full sunlight, really, really good. And there's one tomato that I'll probably actually remove. So these tomatoes, look at the health on this, look at the color, look at the beauty. Every tomato is doing real well, except for this tomato right here. This tomato is showing some slow growth and it's not looking very healthy. So instead of fighting that, I'm probably just going to remove that tomato and put a better one in. I don't want that spreading diseases to any of the other tomatoes. One thing you'll notice too is these new clips I'm using at the top. And I've got these clips, they're pretty cool. The reason I'm using these is there's gonna become a point where the tomatoes grow so tall, they're gonna grow all the way to the top. So instead of cutting the sucker at the top, what I can do is just release this button and allow the tomato to drop down. This is something called lowering and leaning. So we can lower the tomato, this way we can easily reach the fruit better. And it's a really good method, especially when you grow tomatoes up a single stem like this and they get very tall. As we move back to this section, everything's still growing really well and we're still transitioning from one season to the next. And here's a cauliflower that I'm actually going to have to harvest now. And the reason I'm gonna to have to get this cauliflower is because we've got this rain that's gonna to continue to come. So I don't want the, flower head, uh, the cauliflower head actually rotting. So you'll see it's a good size right here. Pretty nice looking. We'll have to just cut this out and it's gonna be a delicious lunch. So we'll get the most out of that. We've got more cabbages in the back that are about to be ready too. An incredible amount of carrots because you know we've got the psycho carrot eater tuck and just the cucumbers looking really well, showing small cucumbers, just getting ready right the fruit. In no time, we'll be getting massive cucumber harvest. I cannot wait. One of my favorite things to eat fresh in the summer. And another great thing about the rain is that Tuck's been outside with us a lot now. It's not as hot for him. You can see he's already finding the cucumbers up. This guy got the first cucumber harvest of the year. He just searches, at, searches them out and finds them. He's got such a good nose for them over the years. So we gotta keep an eye on him now because now that he knows where they are, he's gonna be eating them before they'll even get big. So this sneaky guy, he's a great guy and he deserves it. So this is just part of his pay. He's earned it. He's earned it way more than I have. Hit that like button if you love seeing Tuck in the videos. He doesn't want any part of me. He's going back to work on the cucumbers. As we look right above us, we always try to get the most out of this space. We've got a beautiful apple tree growing. It's doing real well. This is the Williams Pride apple, and we're happy with the, how well the tree is doing. It's only, a, it's only the fourth year of the tree, and we want this uh, tree to actually ha hold the fruit like it is, because if you'll notice, it's kind of leaning over the branches, so it's giving the tree more of a, a spread out shape as opposed to just going all upright, which is exactly what you want to see. And then as we turn around, you'll notice another apple tree that's doing real well too. It's doing fantastic right here. A lot of apples on it. And you'll notice that the apple trees in the younger fruit forest are doing better than the apple trees in the older fruit forest because the younger fruit forest, we got the right trees in the first time and we're spraying it with a surround kaolin clay, which is helping a lot. This apple tree is doing excellent also. 
So we're hoping for a good harvest this year when it comes to apples, best ever. Uh, we're not counting our apples before they're harvested, but we're just getting excited and uh, just to come out and see them slowly get bigger and bigger, it's a, it's a great thing to see. Apples are hard to get the overall harvest though because they have to sit on the tree for such a long period of time. These won't be ready till like September, so we've got a lot of time till they're actually ripe. Next to us here, we've got some tomatoes that are doing excellent. And these tomatoes right here, these two are the same variety. This is the, the cherry bomb. And there's a reason they're the same variety. We planted both these tomatoes differently. One with something secret buried underneath it. And I did the same thing at this section. So these are both the same kind of tomatoes, but one of them has something buried underneath it as well. So I'm kind of doing this experiment where we have a control too. So we can uh, you know, show the difference between one and another. Right back here, we've got another kind of zucchini. I believe this is the yellow zucchini. And it's excelling, it's growing really well. You can tell it's different from the Castata Romanesco. It's got smaller leaves, more yellow leaves, and they're packed tighter together. Then we have some tomato growing real well here. Swiss chard, zinnia, more carrots. Some of these carrots I should, probably should have covered a little better, but they're getting pretty big. Look at the size of that baby. Hey, Tucky. Man, this thing almost as big as your head. What do you think? What do you think, boy? He likes snapping the tops off, usually. It's a big one though. Just snap the top off, drop it usually. I'll eat some of the piece of it. This is the good stuff. This is what he wants. So that's gonna take him, that's gonna <laughs> keep him busy. I'll eat that one for a while. We've got some more tomatoes here and then more tomatoes along. This, this brassica looks like it's starting to head up. So this one should head up and do well because this section gets a decent amount of shade too. So it's not pure sunlight. Then we have more apples back here doing well, hanging low showing some apples, and then just endless, endless blueberries. And this is where we put the blueberry, where we had the regular blueberry next to the pink lemonade. So some of the pink lemonades are starting to ripen. That's almost the color of a ripe one. I'll show you some ripe ones in the side garden because we have so many blueberries. But it's gonna be cool when we have a ripe blueberry that looks like that, and then a blue blueberry. So it's kind of like this contrasting color because who would have thought a ripe blueberry could be pink? It's unique, it's delicious, and it's a lot of fun to grow. Looks like Tuck is enjoying that carrot. That thing is just a monster. He's got a lot of work to do on it, but he won't quit. Let's keep moving though. We've got a lot more stuff to show. So I wanna bring you to a section over here where we've got a peach tree that's almost ripe. It's getting really close. It's just on the edge. It's in this section down in the alley, I like to call it. But we've got grapes that are still growing right behind me here. A cabbage that's basically ripe. Uh, more cabbage, uh, carrots, new peppers coming up. So we're making sure that whenever we remove something, we always want to put something in its place. But let me sneak around this section and check out that peach tree right over there. Let's check this peach tree out back here. It's got some peaches that are just on the cusp of being ripe. And I've got to like dance around and move in here because the trees are getting so big. Here's one that's pretty close. Man, nice color on it. Not ripe yet, not huge, but still a decent size. And we've got some more in here that are looking right on the cusp. And these ones, hit it under here. These ones are doing better than some of the other because I, uh, I thinned it more. So in the future, I really need to thin my peach trees more. I'm leaving too much fruit on the trees and I'm ending up with smaller fruit, a lot of it instead of you know a small amount of big fruit. You'll notice right here too. So some of these trees, some of these peaches are getting some fungus on them. So it's not getting enough light and I have too many peaches on it. So next year we'll remove some more of the peaches and remove some more of the leaves as it continues to grow. But as we look over here, you'll see the ones that are getting more light and stuff, they're doing well. So we're still gonna get, we still should get a good peach harvest. This is the Betty Heat peach. It's just not as big as it could be if I hadn't been so greedy. Let me move you over to the side garden though, where we're getting so many blueberries, like this is what we've been uh, investing in. We wanted all the strawberries along the ground and we wanted the blueberries at the bushes. It's happening, let me bring you over. Now we're over in the section that I come out every morning and it's pretty obvious why I come out here. It's blueberry time, <laughs> one of my favorite times. This is why I get so excited about spring and summer. It's because the food comes in, in droves, man. It just comes so heavy. Once the right time of the season happens, it's like, ah, I just love it. There's no words to actually even express it. So we're gonna make sure we pick a lot of these blueberries as well as these black cap raspberries. I'm having a tough time keep on, keeping on them and also we've had a lot of rain so there's some fungal issues. One thing I wanna show you though, look at this new black cap raspberry coming up. This thing is gonna be the one that produces our fruit next year. So in order to produce a lot of fruit, we wanna prune it down to about two to four feet. 
The reason we want to prune to two to four feet is because all the production from the fruit is going to come on lateral branches. So when we cut it at the top, it's going to force all lateral branches to come up. That's where all of our fruit is going to be next year. So by making the right decisions this year, that'll give us good, big harvests for next year. Let's keep moving though, because I want to show you a pink lemonade blueberry, the one I was talking about. Here it is. Here's the pink lemonade. You'll see the complete difference in color. Beautiful color compared to something like a regular blueberry. Let me grab a couple of blueberries just right here. Look at this bush too. <laughs> this thing's a monster. So we got a lot of picking to do. So look at the contrast in color and the pink blueberries. They are delicious too. This one looks like it's bit a little bit. That's today's video, girls. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope these tours that me and Tuck bring you through, they create some value for you. They give you some ideas, maybe some things you need to add. Maybe they give you ideas of things you don't want to do. But overall, we just make these videos to share with all of you, not only because we love doing it, but we want you guys to get something out of it. That's why I always start the outro. I hope you get something out of it. That's really one of the main goals for making these videos. But I want to thank Sean Brennan, one of the new channel members. Thanks for your channel membership. It means a lot to me and Tuck that you are part of Team Grow. Uh, we really do appreciate it a lot. One thing I wanted to say too is that everything we're doing right here, it might seem like, like it's a lot or it's really hard work, but it really isn't. It's, I know in my heart that it's something anybody can do if they have the opportunity. We didn't do anything special here. This is just the culmination of years of continually planting. So there's some consistency in there, but it reminds me of a quote that I really wanna share. It's one of my favorite quotes. It says, to be successful, whether it's gardening or whatever, you don't have to do anything extraordinary. Instead, to be successful, what you need to do is you need to do ordinary things extraordinarily well. So that's what we try to do. We try to put our best foot, you know, do our best work, whatever it is, whatever we plant, we take the time, we try to do it well, we don't rush it. And I think that makes a big difference. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And remember, whenever you're on Amazon, start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. Me and Talk will be back to you again real soon. We 